Good morning everybody and once again welcome back to the channel. In today's video I want to show you how you guys can build an incremental ETL pipeline with Apache hoodie and orchestrate those jobs using Airflow. And for our object store we are going to use Minio. Now Apache hoodie brings database functionality to your data lakes. It allows you to efficiently manage your data. Now why does incremental ETL matters a lot? Assume you have a petabyte scale data. Now performing a full table scan could be expensive and time consuming. This is where Hoodie shines for its incremental processing. You can only process data that has been changed in your data lake. So let's learn how you can build uh, your incremental ETL pipeline uh, with Hoodie, Spark and or orchestrate them using Airflow. Without wasting any further time, let's get started with the labs. All right, so before we begin, uh, uh, on the first part of the video, I already covered about the stack, the Docker Compose file, the project directory, etc. This is gonna be the part two, right? So now we'll straight jump into action. We'll basically spin up the stack, okay? Uh, again, I'll leave the links in the description for the first part if needed. So again, this is the Docker Compose file. You'll be given, you know, all these containers here, Spark Master, Spark Worker, Postgres, Web Server, Scheduler, MinIO, everything is there here, right? So what we need to do is come here, and first we need to spin up the stack. So we're gonna say docker compose up hyphen hyphen build minus D. Now this will take a couple of uh, minutes. So let's uh, wait uh, for all these containers to be in the running state. Now I just wanted to make sure just in case if the web server does not start, you can issue a command called docker compose restart web server. And um, let's go to the uh, docker desktop. And as you can see, all my containers are now in the running state. So now what we can do is we can head over to Chrome and we can uh, go to localhost 8080. We should see the airflow. If you go to localhost 9090, here you will see your Spark master. And if you go to localhost 9000, you will see our MinIO buckets uh, over here. So now first thing we come to the airflow uh, login page and we wanna say admin admin. And here you can see we do have uh, two DAGs here which I'll be using to explain you the incremental ETL. Now coming to the MinIO console, here we can come here and say admin and the password is gonna be password. And sure enough, it works. Now go to the bucket section, create bucket, and let's type the name hoodie test and click on create bucket. So now we basically have a bucket that we can play with, okay? Now heading back to our DAGs. Now we'll go to admin, we'll go to connections and we're gonna click on this plus button. Now the connection uh, ID is gonna be spark. Uh, let me just zoom in a little bit over here, okay. Spark, con, select the drop down, select Spark. Uh, host will be Spark colon slash slash Spark hyphen master. Again, because it's running on a Docker container, right? And the port would be 7077. Deploy mode would be client. Uh, Spark binary would be Spark submit. Click on save. So now we have a uh, connection, right? So now let's go to the DAG and let's go to create hoodie table DAG. Uh, if you go to graph, uh, this will basically fire a, you know, Spark submit job. So let's take a look at the code. Uh, let me actually also zoom in a little bit. Here, as you can see, right, we have a Spark submit operator. And uh, as you can see, we are using that connection ID that we just created. And we are uh, gonna fire the job called create hoodie table.py. We are providing in two package, which is hoodie spark bundle 3.4 package and um, the Apache Hadoop AWS package over here. Okay. Now let's go to the file and see what it does. So coming to the job section, create hoodie tables and I will collapse this one. So this code right here on the first part, we set uh, the MinIO access secret key and the endpoint. And uh, the, the reason we are using MinIO over here is because we are running these jobs in a Docker container. So hence we are using the MinIO over here, okay? Then we create a Spark session. We set all these uh, variables over here. And then uh, pretty easy, right? To teach you incremental ETL, we need two tables, right? We need some table that we can perform some join. And this is the most simple example. I'm taking the orders and the customer table, right? So I have some function here. As you can see, uh, we create uh, the order data, we create a Spark data frame, and then we create the customer data, we create a Spark data frame. And then as you can see, we are performing upsort on our um, MinIO buckets. So we have two functions over here. Hopefully made sense, right? All right, so now what we will do, uh, come here, come to the graph section, and now we'll click on the run over here. 
So now what this will do is basically this will run my job, the Spark job, and it's gonna create two hoodie tables on our Minio. So let's wait. This this could take time again because you're running it locally, right? So uh, again, it would take a little bit time. So now let's come to our Minio. Uh, head over to somewhere object browser, hoodie test. Right now we do not have um, any 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 files over here. So let's wait for the job to be complete. And as you can see, the job did fail. So what we can do is we can simply restart. So I'm just gonna restart the job. And again, the, the reason it failed is because sometimes when you are starting the Docker container, right, the, the workers or the master, uh, 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 you know, are still in the, are, are still spinning up, right? So that's why it, it would fail sometimes, okay? So again, but if it does, you can simply restart as you're doing everything locally, okay? So let's see. All right, so looks like the job is success now. So we can verify that. So let me click here. We see a green over here. We go to graph. Yep, success, all the three state are success. Now, if I go to the min IO and if I refresh, beautiful, I see my customer on the order table. Again, my customer table is partitioned by state and in each state I have my hoodie metadata and the parquet files. Same goes for the order items as well, okay? So hopefully made sense, right? So we have two, uh, so basically now we have two Apache Hoodie tables. Now let's focus on learning the concept of incremental ETL, right? How we're gonna do that. So now let's focus our attention on the incremental ETL part, right? So how to build that incremental ETL pipeline. So again, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, I have a DAG called incremental ETL over here. Let's click on the code part. Uh, hopefully you guys can see. Let me also expand this and then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, okay? Okay, so here again, you see, uh, I'm using the Spark submit operator, right? As you can see over here. And then I am firing a job called incremental ETL orders.py. And I'm providing these two packages and I'm providing how much memory uh, I wanna use for the job, okay? Now, the main thing is this particular job over here. So, so far you, you're seeing how uh, we are firing the Spark jobs from Airflow, right? We're using the Spark submit operator in Airflow, okay? So hopefully that made sense. Now let's review this, this one right here. This is the main thing, okay? So I'll go here. Now inside jobs, you will see that particular Python file, incremental ETL over here. Let me make sure I have the right file first. Incremental ETL orders, yep, that's the one. All right, so uh, I'll go slow over here uh, because there's a lot, lot going on, so okay. So first over here, we declare the global variables such as minio endpoint, access, secret, the bucket name, uh, etc. Right. So we set all these up. Now I wanted to make things easy. So hence, uh, you know, I made a template. So as you can see over here, checkpoint bucket. So uh, whenever the incremental ETL happens, uh, it, it's going to read the data and, and the, uh, it's going to store the last process commit on S3. Right. And the next time it runs again, it's going to fetch the metadata and then it's going to start from that particular point. Right. So the checkpoint bucket is where it would store the metadata. Okay. Now over here you can see uh, we have a attribute called source. Now here I say it's a hoodie, right? Table name is orders and I provide the path to my uh, hoodie transactional data lake. This is my silver zone. So I'm saying I wanna load the orders data. And if you observe carefully, the type is INC, which stands for incremental, which means the template knows that for order, it needs to perform the incremental ETL, right? And if you see over here, we do the same thing for customers, but for the customers, we do a full. Because usually a customer is a, like a dimension, right? Uh, the, the data will be small compared to orders, right? So orders is huge, so, and hence we wanna only fetch the new data that's coming in, right? And then we're joining it with customer data, and we're building a simple view, right? So again, I'm gonna repeat here. We provide the checkpoint bucket, which is a Minio bucket. Then we load these two hoodie tables, which is the order and the customer. Orders, we are fetching that in an incremental fashion and the customer table, we are fetching it in a full one, which means we are doing a full scan on the customer table, which is a small one and the order table is huge. So I only want to process new data that's coming in. So that's that. Now, again, we create the Spark session. We set all these variables. You can review these codes, of course. And then what I want to show you is this one, main function. 
So we call uh, dot load method, which means it's gonna load the data from customer and orders. Uh, customer will be a full table scan, orders is gonna be an incremental one. Then again, uh, we print the data frame from customer and orders, right? So using Spark SQL. And then here is my business query, right? This could be your aggregates and any complex uh, SQL, right? So here I'm showing you a very simple one. I'm doing a very simple join between a customer and orders. So uh, as you can see, I'm getting the customer ID, customer name, customer email, order ID, order name and order value. You know, simple enough, right? And then as you can see, we write the data into the gold zone. So the table name is gonna be gold underscore orders underscore with underscore customers. So in a nutshell, let me explain you a little bit, okay? So when the code runs for the first time, what it's gonna do, it's gonna fetch the data from the order. Once the data is processed, it's gonna store the commit or the last process checkpoint on MinIO bucket. The next time when you run the job, it will uh, it will load the check, uh, it will load the uh, commits and all the metadata and, and gonna say, hey, do I have any new thing to process from the hoodie tables? If it is, you know, keep processing, right? Hopefully made sense. Now, I do wanna mention that I have written this uh, utility class. Uh, you know, uh, you can find this on the GitHub and the complete flowchart, like how the incremental ETL pipeline works is given on my GitHub section. So again, if you wanna dive further into details, into the source code, go ahead, read, read this during your free time. All right, all right, makes sense. Okay, so now uh, go to DAG. And here we have the incremental ETL. Before that, we go to MinIO. We do not have any gold zone or do we do not have any metadata as well. So let's 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 do this, you know. Let's go to this one graph and let's fire the incremental ETL now. So I'm gonna run this. And uh, this will take a couple of seconds. In case if it fails for the first time, you can always retry. Again, we are doing everything locally, right? So in case if it fails, just, just click on retry or 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 trigger the DAG again. So now it's running. Now this will take a couple of seconds. Oh wow, that was pretty fast. I did not expect that would be that fast. So it's done. Now let's go to our MinIO. I will refresh here. Here you can see the metadata and I can see the gold. I can see the gold layer, right? Now what I would also wanna do, hoodie test metadata. I would wanna download this and actually show you if, I, if possible, right? So let me see if I can open this up. So if you if you observe right, it stores the last process commit on 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 MinIO bucket right, the table name and everything etc. So the next time when it's gonna run, it's gonna load this metadata and it's gonna perform an incremental query. So hopefully you guys, hopefully you guys got the idea right right. Now to verify this that it worked, uh, I have a simple Python job here, so which is called test.py. Again, uh, this particular Python job. All it does is basically reads the data from the gold zone, right? So to verify, to show you that the join worked, everything worked fine, right? So I can come here and I'm gonna say Python3 uh, test.py. Now it's creating the Spark session and it's gonna read the data from our MinIO now. So yeah, works fine. Let me try to zoom out if I can. As you can see, right, that's our join the data that we, that we did, right? So you, you see, right, how easily uh, we were able to do an incremental ETL, right? We were able to fetch data from the order hoodie table in an incremental fashion. We performed a full table scan on the customer table because it's a small table. So we read the date, data from these two as a temp view, and then we perform the join in Spark, right? And then we wrote that data, the gold data into the gold zone, right? So hopefully this made sense. Uh, I know it does appear easy on the video, but uh, what I want you to do is uh, pause the video, go to the source code, try to read uh, uh, the source code, try to do these labs uh, in your free time during weekends, whenever you get a chance. And that's the best way to learn anything, right? That's, that's, that's pretty much it, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, you know, we 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 are we are orchestrating our Spark jobs using Airflow, right? Anytime any jobs fail, you can use uh, you know email operator to send alerts, right, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right, uh, on the Airflow part. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any further questions, do let me know your question in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to answer it. 
So the entire source code for this particular lab would be there on my GitHub in the lab too. So I encourage you guys to go read the source code, try it out in your free time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.